In this video, we will demonstrate how to set up event or logging triggers. To begin, let's start by clicking on the System Setup button. And once the System Setup panel is here, we will navigate to Event Triggers. As we come to the Event Triggers tab, we will see that we have a few different places that we can set up for different channels and different conditions with individual thresholds. Our system runs off of these three separate tables that we see here. The first one is considered arming. The second one is once the system is armed and we are waiting to trigger to start logging, and then the final is, as we are logging, we are now waiting for a release criteria. Now, in some instances, using an arming criteria may not be warranted. In other instances, it may be. If it is not needed, you can simply click the Ignore Arm criteria, and this state will always be bypassed. So for demonstration purposes though, let's use this criteria and let's put in a few different channels. So to consider an arming state, this would mean that I, I want some condition to be met before I allow the system to even arm itself. Now for the type of testing that I'm accustomed to, using a vehicle speed could be advantageous here. For example, if I'm going to conduct a braking event from 100 kilometers per hour, I wouldn't want the system to be armed until I'm somewhere in the vicinity of that actual test speed. For example, I may be driving around on the proving grounds at a speed of 30 kilometers per hour, and I may need to make a brake application, which if I set that up as my trigger, would cause additional data to be captured that I'm not interested in. So to begin here, in the top table, I'm going to go to the channel field. If I right mouse click here, I get a couple of different options. I can go to mapped channels, which will provide a list of only channels in our mapped list that have been turned on for logging. And I can also go to all channels in case one of the channels I'm interested in is not actually set up as a mapped channel. Now for this example, I'm going to use map channels and I'm going to go select 105 speed. This is currently coming from physical channel 850, which is a user add-in channel, uh, which is created by some software that I'm using to simulate driving. So I'm going to select 105 and then I want to pick a condition. We have a few different options. We have above, below, and then rise above or fall below. So it would be looking for a condition where you are below a value and rise above this value um, or the opposite of that for fall below. What I want to do though is use something, let's just say um, anytime I am above 40 miles per hour, I want the system to arm itself. Now what I want to do next is define when I want the system to start logging. Now for this, if I'm doing a brake test, for example, I would select a channel, maybe that is, let's say pedal travel, for example, or one of my pressure transducers. So I'm gonna go ahead and select pedal travel. Now in this case, I am interested in actually looking at a rise above condition. I wanna see when I go from above to below, let's say five millimeters. And if I push on the brake pedal right now, we can see the actual value indicated over to the right. Now it isn't worth noting that the unit that we're gonna have by default here would be the unit that was set up when we calibrated the channel. If I needed to look at this in another unit inside of the same unit class, I could easily switch this here. Now I'll be looking at displayed values in inches and I wanna make the accommodation here in my threshold. Okay, so we do have the option to select more than one channel. We can do and or type statements.
Now I have the option to pick from whether this condition or this condition happens, or maybe I require that both conditions have happened. So let's just say anytime that I go above five, rise above five millimeters, but I also want to make sure that my left front pressure is also above three bar. Now this would cause the system to trigger and start logging. And now I must define a condition that will cause the system to stop logging or to release. So now let's select a release criteria that will cause the system to stop logging. For this example here, I want to use a couple of different channels. The first being speed. And I want to use a condition where my speed signal falls below, let's say, one mile per hour. Now you have to be careful if you're using GPS sensors. Trying to select zero as a release speed uh, generally doesn't work out very great because typically GPS sensors have a difficult time distinguishing between, let's say, zero and a half a mile an hour or you know one kph or so. So I'm going to say as the speed falls below one miles per hour, um, or at this point, I'm going to select another channel. Or when I have a pedal travel condition that say falls below three millimeters. Now you'll also notice that in all of these different fields, I have check you spacebar is also an option. So in case I need to manually arm apply or release the system, I can do that with the space bar. I, I can uncheck those as well if not required. A couple of other things to mention here would be that we have a min event time that can be specified. So for example, if I am never interested in any event that lasts shorter than two tenths of a second, I can program this in and the next, the first apply that I do that is only 0.1 seconds long, would essentially be disregarded, it wouldn't be saved. You can also program in a release timeout here, and this will give me a way to stop logging even if these conditions aren't met, but a time threshold is. So for example, if I know that I would never have an event that's going to be longer than 20 seconds, maybe I experience a sensor issue during a test where I can't really pay as much of attention as I would need to to see what's going on, um, I can sort of protect the integrity of the next breaking event that I want to capture by using this release timeout. So in the conditions that I have now, once I have the logger enabled, and then we are above 40 miles per hour, the system would be armed. And then as my pedal travel rises above five millimeters and my pressure on the left front corner is above three bar, we would start logging. We would then release logging at the point where speed falls below one mile per hour or our pedal travel falls below three millimeters. Now at this point, I am getting a message here that the current trigger configuration that I'm using is now different than what has last been saved. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this for future reference. You'll notice that it's gonna let me pick where I wanna place this and it's has a file extension of .trg. So I'm going to use just uh, demo.trigger. Okay, so now to test this, let's go ahead and enable the logger. And you'll see that I have a status here as well as down at the bottom. So it's telling me that my logger is enabled now and I'm waiting to arm. Okay, so what I need to do is start driving the vehicle and you'll see now that I have a speed that's increasing. And as we cross above 40 miles an hour there, we should see that the logger becomes armed. Okay, now after that's happened, you'll see that we are waiting for our trigger. So now if I go ahead and step on this brake pedal, we'll see that we're now slowing down and we're waiting for speed to fall below one or pedal travel to fall below three millimeters. So let's do that one more time. I'm going to speed back up. Now going above 40 miles an hour. Now I'm going to step on the brake. I'm going to release the brake. 
and we'll see the pedal travel condition be met. Okay, and then as one more example, let's change this release timeout here to, let's say five seconds. I'm gonna re-enable the logger and start driving again. You'll notice that I was not able to make those changes unless the logger was disabled, and that is on purpose. Okay, so now I'm gonna start my apply, and after five seconds, if those conditions haven't been met, the release timeout will kick in. That's exactly what just happened. So this is how the event triggers works. You do have the ability to play sounds and things like that when a certain condition is met. Hopefully this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.